So we got the new sample boxes of battle goats in. They were FedEx overnighted from China. Can't imagine that was cheap, but we get a chance to take a look at battle goats in its actual final form. So the box itself looks fantastic. The artwork is just super crisp, super clean. The icons on the top are very readable. Everything looks really, really good. The Cardlord's logo came out good on the bottom. UPC is clear. Let's take a look inside. The lid's pretty tight to open, which is good. That means you've got a good solid, firm close. It's not going to randomly drop stuff out. And it's a very tight, tough hinge lid, so you can put some pressure on it. It's not actually going to bend and break right away. So we'll open it up, take the cards out, take a look at it. So we've got the rule book, the regular cards, and then the Kickstarter exclusives. So we'll set the regular cards aside, pull the rule book over here, and take a look at that first. So the rule book came out very good. The quality of printing is phenomenal, it just feels really good. It's not going to fall over and be real flimsy or anything. The colors are very vibrant, does a good job explaining and showing the colors of what's what, and the colors matched up with the cards really well. So that was a nice surprise to see. I didn't ever see a final version of the rulebook until just now, so the colors turned out great. Um, the background images kind of show through, and that was the idea. Lots of different cards. Very clear though, everything's easy to read, easy to see. The fold lines look good. A little bit tight on a couple of the folds there, but still not an issue, especially since it folds out this way. The dark, light, contrast colors look great. Again, everything looked very, very clean. And then, again, the Cardlord's logo even came out good. That's a tough one to get to look good because it's so dark but it looks great. I think that'll hold up really well. Let's take a look through the regular cards. So, my first thing I always like to do with them is figure out how they shuffle. And it feels good. They don't feel like they're gonna bend, break, quality same just like our test cards were. They'll hold up. So they're in completely random order, obviously. We'll just flip through a few of them, take a look, see what they all look like color-wise. The borders were trimmed perfectly. Same thing with the back. No issues at all. They look great. Abilities came out clear on the bottom, and colors just look fantastic. Santiago's artwork just pops. It's awesome. Stinger, the Thief Goat, the ever-popular Landmine. That's a good example of the icons in the top right. That was a late addition to the game. We decided we needed to have more iconography to make it actually more clear as to what they were. The colors of the numbers are very clear and it looks really good in the print version, but adding the icons really helps set apart which cast or which type of card you're attacking. The Lava Toad, one of the ever popular favorites, still looks incredibly vibrant and very, very well done. The Night Goat, Another thing is down in the text on the bottom here, we had to make sure that the icons and the text there were very clear to show what type you had a plus or a minus against, and I think that came out really well as well. Just going to flip through. The glass can looks great with the transparency. That one printed really well. The super cute pigs. And the flying bear. He's so happy. Some of the colors, like the background on the witch doctor goat, just came out great. The chef goat working on his kitchen. The engineer. Even the psychic's orb has that glow to it, and the glow translated really well. Baby Dragon and the Mama Dragon both look very vibrant. We kept their green.
and even like the ninja goat from having dark dark to dark transitions came out very well. Werewolf goat again, a nice white to dark transition looks really good. Some of the ones we had like the samples of, like Royal Guard goat, we've seen them for months just on the sample cards. It came out exactly like the sample. Same thing with the Matador goat, they just look perfect. It's great. And then these were the heroes. So these ones are kind of cool. These were the Kickstarter heroes. Oh, let me finish sorting them. Missed a couple. It's just a lion. All right, so there is my hero. The Tuck. It looks just like me. It's awesome. Everybody that plays it goes, wait a minute, that's you. Very, very well done artwork. And then Shannon's is in here as well. There's Shannon's hero, Shanna Lane. Looks just like her. It's awesome. So the Kickstarter heroes, we had five of them. Alfonso, he's actually got a new ability, which we were pretty pleased with. It played a little bit different and definitely shook up some games. Instead of attacking, you can discard this card. If you do, you can take any card from any battlefield and place it face down anywhere on your battlefield. So it definitely changed some games with that one. Very fun though. Artwork looked great. And then, cool story, Alfonso, that character, his granddaughter is Julieta, one of our other heroes. Julieta's character says instead of attacking, you may rearrange your entire battlefield and cards that are face up if you flip back. Again, a really cool one after we added some more of the cards that actually manipulated the battlefield and flipped cards face up. It was really cool to see how that interaction changed it. And her artwork just looks super cute. Glendar, Glenn was actually our first backer. Super awesome to see him in there. We got the Egyptian theme, the scarab came out perfect. Just colors look awesome. Instead of attacking, choose two cards from any battlefield, and they do battle. Very, very powerful. The heroes are just awesome. Jonas is actually not only a hero, but he's also the leader of the Kickstarter recruits, which is the added characters. So he was actually a goat. His ability is really cool. It's one of the strongest ones. So he's the only hero that starts out at a 5, but when attacking or defending, you can move him to any open spot on your battlefield and he gets plus one for each adjacent card. That's the only card that can actually move on its own, and right off the bat starts off typically as a nine, so very, very powerful hero. And then Tabor, he's kind of our necromancer, warlock-style hero. When attacking, flip all opposing cards adjacent to the card you attack face up, and they remain face up. So he can definitely cause some damage, wreak some havoc. So the heroes look great, they were very good quality. They all were happy with how they looked, although the characters said they looked just like them. Now we'll take a look at the Kickstarter add-ons. These ones were the ones that only Kickstarter backers get. So right off the bat, let's pull out Super Goat. This is one that we did a lot of testing with, but Super Goat retained the same ability. Instead of attacking, you can bring back a fallen goat from this game and place it face down anywhere in your battlefield. Definitely can be a game changer, so it's nice to see him. The zombie goat. Zombie goat's very thematic. If he's face down when losing battle, then he just flips face up instead. You gotta kill him twice. The rebel goat. This was one of the two community goats. People voted on whether his name should be Commando or Rebel and ended up at Rebel Goat. He's a nice little catch up one. If the, uh, plus two of the player you're in battle with has more remaining cards than you, so he's a good way to balance it out a little bit. The Night Watch goat. Again, more playing on the face-up cards. He has plus three versus cards that are face-up. The Demolitionist. Demolitionist is five, but plus six versus equipment, making him an 11. He can actually take out the landmine. The Beastmaster Goat. We kind of kept with that theme. He's like the Engineer. The Engineer's ability lets you bring back equipment. The Beastmaster, he's a four. Same thing as the Engineer, but instead of attacking, you can bring back a Fallen Creature card from this game. So... Very, very cool, very thematic, very fun. 
The Beastmaster is one of my favorites because it's a goat riding a giant badger. I would not want to get in the way of that. And the Alchemist, this was the other community goat. This one was the most the latest addition. Um, it was a very, very tricky card when we started testing with it, but we had a ton of fun. He's only a 4 again, but instead of attacking, you can swap a card on any battlefield with a card from your discard pile, and that card remains face up. So it gives you some, some manipulation of what's already been played and changing some cards around, but a very interesting one, very fun to play with. And again, they look just fantastic. The printing came out perfect on all of them. The borders are great. Everything looks very even, very fantastic. These will just get shuffled into the regular deck. We'll switch out so the heroes are all together and then mix everything up. No discoloration, no difference from the added cards. Just very, very smooth, very good transition. With the rule book and the box, we've got a pretty good amount of room in here. Just in case we ever come up with anything extra or any more cards we'd like to add, we definitely have some room. So that was nice to find out. And then the box closes, like I said, very tight, very locked in fit, but looks good, feels solid. Can't wait for you guys to get it. They're going to finish up the print run, and we should be getting shipping shortly after that. Uh, shipping's probably going to take about four to six weeks since it's coming from all the way over in Shenzhen via Freightliner. So. We'll keep you updated. Thanks a lot.